What's good, YouTube family? I appreciate y'all for tuning back into another video. Thank y'all for coming to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Smash that like button on this video. Let's get this thing, you know what I'm saying? Let's get this algorithm of YouTube going. Let's continue to help me to grow so I can use my platform to glorify God and to lead back and to get back to y'all. Basically, in this video, I'm telling y'all what I'm doing, which is going to be a, a wave cut with the number one open. And it's going to be a low taper. And I was also explaining that this day I gave a one-on-one -on -one class uh, to a mentee and you know I got him right and I dropped some gems on him and we made another video on that and it's on my channel it's like it's called uh, the one-on-one -on -one class or something y'all see it if y'all looking for it but yeah so to kick this cut off just like any waivers cut you want to come in with a with a comb and you want to comb the hair in the pattern that the waiver that the waiver brushes so that it lifts the hair up on the scalp so that you can get the cleanest uh so that you can get the cleanest cut possible and so that uh you can get the most even cut possible i started off with the number one and a half just because the client thought that he wanted that but then i was like man let me just take this number one and a half around this crown and then i was like man let's do a number one open with the masters because it's, it's a little with the masters a one open is a little bit longer he wanted it to be a little bit longer so i was like hey man let's do a one open with the masters we agreed on it so that's what we're doing we're taking it down with the number one open Making sure that we always comb, always combing and uh, always cutting and combing. Just so it lifts the hair up off the scalp so we can get the most even cut possible. Just making sure that we hit every single area and get all these hairs laying how they're supposed to. Alright y'all, so now I got my babyless FX and my skeletons, and I'm just going in and just creating a small little rainbow shape. Right up on our zero because this is going to be a low taper. Now I got my masters with the blade open, and I'm going to set this in, keeping the rainbow shape, setting this guy line in about three quarters of an inch to half an inch, half an inch to three quarters of an inch, definitely not a full inch, and then I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to open to the top of the guideline. I'm going to close the clipper halfway, go halfway down the guideline, and then close the clipper all the way and hit the bottom of the guideline and take this line out completely, making this fade as smooth as possible. And then while I'm here, just to be as efficient, as time, efficient with my time as possible, I'm going to go ahead and fade this beard in, doing the same steps, just the opposite. Now I got the number one guard on, and I'm keeping that rainbow shape, making sure that I don't go too high and I don't dig into the waves. And... I'm just be doing the same thing. I'm gonna go up about three quarters of an inch, making sure that I kind of flick out at the top of that wave. And then I'm just gonna open halfway and close and hit the bottom of this line. I know it's not gonna take it out completely, but it's gonna soften it very well for me to be able to come in and do detail work and take that line out and make the fade as smooth as possible. Right here, I just closed my lever about halfway and I hit this line just to soften it up so that when I come in with that one and a half, I don't have to fade and push that fade too high. I just kind of just hit that line just to soften it up and notice how I don't I'm not gonna do too much work with this one and a half because I don't want to push this fade up too high and now I'm just coming back in with my number one guard on doing detail work getting ready to hit this bottom line soften this thing up as much as possible so that when I come in and to do detail work you know a lot of it's already done I just gotta really pinpoint a couple spots So once again, right here with the beard, I'm gonna save my time, be efficient, be efficient with my time. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fade that beard in. So right here, I'm gonna be doing the same thing, same steps, rinse and repeat on this side. So I'm gonna let y'all apply what you already learned from the other side and apply it right here so that you are listening and applying in the same day. That's gonna help you remember when you go to do this in the shop, you know? But y'all know this is story time for me, man. My message for today is just to be very careful what you see what you hear and how you speak. The Bible is very clear to, you know what I'm saying, that faith comes by hearing and 
hearing by the word of God. So you always got to have the word of God in your, in your, you always got to be hearing the word of God. You always got to be studying the word of God. Um, what you see, the, the, the Bible is very clear about how the eyes are just very powerful and the things that you see are very powerful. And it says that the eye is the lamp of the body. So if the eye is healthy, the whole body is healthy and full of light. But if the eye is bad, the whole body will be full of darkness. So you got to make the decision to be full of light. You got to make the decision to be a child of the light. You know what I'm saying? And the Bible says that we are the light and the salt of the world. So we must let our light shine bright before men. And we must let our salt be full of flavor. And the things that you speak over yourself and your life and your loved ones or anyone else in the world is so very important. Because it says, like, God used to call, God calls those things which were not as is though they are. So we have the power and ability to do the same thing. We call those things which be not as if they are. That's speaking things in existence. That's not that's not law of attraction or this, that, and the other. That's simply following the instructions that literally doing the same thing that God did because you had the same power because the power of Christ, the same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in us. We had the same spirit in us that Jesus Christ had in him. Don't downplay that and make sure that you're using that power and authority that Jesus has given you and make sure that today you're choosing life and blessings because God says in Deuteronomy, today I said, this day I set before you life and blessing, death and curse, you choose. So every day you have to make the decision. I hope that y'all are choosing life and blessings. To get into the back of the taper, man, we're going to go ahead and set this bar line in. We're going to set it in just straight across the back of the head. And our goal is to not go above that dent in the back of his head. So, y'all see that. If you go up above the dents, when people have dents like that, it just it makes the fade. It just makes the fade look funny. The cut look different. I don't know how to explain it. With experience, if y'all ain't never experienced that, you will, you will tell. So, I'm going to set this ball line in. And then, I'm going to put this blade open. Guy line in. About three quarters of an inch. Usually, I would do a full inch in the back. But, like I said... We want to keep it up under that uh, dent in the back of his head. So it's going to be the same process. I'm going to be going open halfway and close. And in the back, I like to work one side and then the other side. So I'm going to go open to the top of the guideline. Close the clipper halfway. Go halfway down the guideline. And then close the clipper all the way. And take that bottom line out completely. I got the number one guard on, and I'm just going right up under that dent, and uh, just setting this guideline in about an inch. And I'm just going to be very patient with this guideline, brush one, fade one, you know what I'm saying? Always make sure that you're brushing while you're fading, just so that you can see how everything is truly laying, because obviously when you fade, it pushes the hair up, so you got to brush the hair back down, just to see what everything's really looking like. And then I'm just going to be doing the same process, I'm going to be going open to the top of the guideline that we just established. And I'm going to close the clipper halfway, go halfway down the guideline we just established, then close the clipper all the way and hit the bottom of the guideline. And nine times out of ten, that line isn't going to come out from the blade open to the number one closed. That's when you're going to have to come back in and either use a zero guard or just do detail work with your blade open. Right here, I got a number one and a half guard on, and like I said, we trying to we trying to preserve the wave, so I'm just softening that up, right up in that little spot that I was talking about, that dip in the back of the head, that dip in the back of his head. I'm just softening it up just a little bit. I'm not taking that too high, and I'm about to come back in. And what I couldn't soften up with that one and a half guard, I'm gonna soften it up right now with this one. I'm just going to pull this whole fade together right now, man. I'm just going to pull it all together, trusting my process, being very patient with this spot, 
turn on my clipper if I have to, open and closing, lever playing, open and closing the blade when needed, and just working this spot out. Now I got some holding spray, and I use Tresemme Volume 4 or 5, and it doesn't really matter what holding spray you use, just make sure that you, when you use it, you brush everything into place, and then you come back in, and you blow dry it with the cold air on, just to freeze it. With my neck lineups, man, I tap the slants in, and then once the slant gets around to the top of the ear, I use the corner of my blade just to do that roundabout around the ear, and then I'm gonna brush everything down one more time, and going with the guideline that I already have established, I'm gonna just cut any overhand hairs just to solidify my lineup. Then I'm gonna tap the back of this beard line in, keeping it nice and natural, you know. I always keep all my lines as natural, but as crispy as possible. You don't have to push nobody back to get them crispy, but they can be crispy naturally. You just gotta know what you're doing and pay attention to master your craft. Now it's just about details. You know, like I say all the time, man, God is in the details. God is in the details of life. Make sure that you're focusing on the details, man, because it's very important. And once you learn how to save somebody's hairline and keep it as natural as possible and still get them super crispy, they're gonna realize how rare that is. And that's gonna be one of the things that keep them coming back to you every single time. Um, I've saved so many people's hairlines and they are so appreciative of it. Like you don't understand how appreciative someone would be if you really save their hairline or raise their beard line up because a lot of people some people don't think they can grow a beard because a barber cut it off all the time but if you you know just being able to talk to them hey this is what you should do with your beard line this is what you should do with your neckline this is what you should do with the back of your slants this is what you should do with the front of your lineups or with your vertical bars or with the c cups you know people love that this is just one of the services that i offer man i offer a haircut with a black mask and a hot towel and the hot towel, the black mask, it just removes impurities and blackheads. And then uh, just using the, using the hot towel at the end, it just feels really good for the client. And it cleans the skin for you. So when you come do the lineup, it just makes things easier for you. So y'all know how I do my lineups. I plant in the middle. I work my way to one side. Once the front meets the side, I tap the vertical bar in. After I tap the vertical bar in, I go ahead, if there's a C-cup, which there is on this cut because it's a low taper, I tap the C-cup in, and um, I just rinse and repeat and do the same thing on the other side. So the front has met the side, now that's I'm going to tap the vertical bar in. Always being sure to be very diligent in the lineups. I'm, I'm diligent all over the head for the fade and everything, but especially with the lineup because me, that's the most important thing. So I'm always making sure that I set the guideline in naturally the first time and then I brush and comb any overhanging hairs that would be overhanging and I cut them so that there are no overhanging hairs. So with the C cup, I set it in at the bottom of the vertical bar, I come to the uh, bottom of the C cup and then I meet them in the middle. And y'all can see this thing all natural, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, learn how to cut all natural and be very detailed all naturally. Y'all see me tap the back of the vertical, or the back of that beard lineup in. So now it's just rinse and repeating the same thing with the front of this lineup, or with the with the whole lineup. I'm gonna start in the middle, I'm gonna work my way to one side. Once the side meets the vertical bar, I'm gonna tap the vertical bar in. Then I'm gonna work on that C cut. So when it comes to the C-cup, just to make sure everything's, you know what I'm saying, lined up and everything's symmetrical. Look at the side that I already have established, just to make sure, because sometimes one bite might be longer than the other naturally. So you just wanna be att pay attention to make sure that they're both lined up and uh, they're both at the same point. So the symmetry's there, so the symmetry's there. So right here, I'm, I'm taking my Barber Magic Pencil, and I'm just putting a real soft line in, not, not pressing too hard on the pencil. Make sure that you don't press too hard, and that you don't uh, get any of this in the hair. And low key on this video, I tweaked because I put the I put the magic pencil on before I even put the enhancements in. Usually, it's supposed to put the enhancements in and then come back in with the barber magic pencil. 
but make sure when you do line this up that you just take it and drag it down you just want to drag it down or from the side away from where you put it in naturally you know what i'm saying so in the front you touch it and you drag it down just to drag it down the head a little bit just to create that contrast so right here i'm coming in with my enhancements and i use the the cordless compressor the beam team xl with the shine cuts hair color enhancements card and with no drip it's all 245 products i just i like how they look i like how it feels i like how easy it is to load and unload this compressor and uh, i just like how it applies i like how it applies and i like you know for the most part i keep it looking pretty natural sometimes I, I when i first was getting used to it i kind of sprayed too much on a couple people uh I'm, I'm getting real used to it like I'm just getting used to usually I would used to use fiber so it's like I'm still in the transition to learning how to use this thing but I just like how it applies all right y'all so this is one of my favorite parts of the cut man coming in with the razor and since we used uh, the magic pencil, we're just kind of doing one little stroke, bringing that pencil back to the top, just to really get that contrast popping. And if you haven't already done this, I suggest that instead of using uh, trimmers on the beard line, I suggest you put the trimmers down, just go straight in with the straight razor, and that's that's when razoring really took off for me, learning how to use that razor. Make sure that you hold your razor at a 45 degree angle and really stretch that skin so that you don't cut nobody and you, you don't want to cut your, you know what I'm saying you don't want to cut your client just being a professional you know that's part of being a professional is knowing how to work and use your, all of your tools and make sure that you clear every single spot y'all see how it brings this thing together making sure I'm clearing the cheek clearing the hair up by his, by his eye all of it because even if it's like little baby hairs there's still hairs there and it does make a difference in the final product of the cut all right you two if y'all was able to sit through this 17 18 minute video of me i appreciate every single one of y'all if y'all tuned in to learn something i hope that you take something from my game apply it to yours advance in your career advance in your craft and advance in life and uh if you came just because you would like to watch barber videos and you know what i'm saying you just want to get satisfied i truly appreciate y'all please like comment this, and subscribe uh, just continue to help me to grow so i can continue to get back to y'all man and reach more people i appreciate y'all hope to see you back on the next one and may god bless you too let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section